So today, we're going to talk about alignment. We've been calling this gathering the art of allowing for a number of years. And the reason that we like that title so much is because it speaks to what your true power is and it speaks to what your true path to that power is. Because if you care about discovering and practicing, it's why we call it an art. It's something you work at until it clicks into knowledgeable place for you. When you practice the art of allowing, what is it that you're allowing? You're allowing your alignment with the source within you. You're allowing your resonance with the energy that creates worlds. You're allowing your vibrational alignment and resonance with all that you've been asking for. The way we've been describing it to you in as simple terms as possible is that in your physical form, you are an extension of that powerful non-physical energy. And you came to explore the leading edge, the leading edge contrast for the express purpose of finding more leading edge. Because as eternal beings, you know, new thoughts are important. New ideas are important. New desires are important. New reasons to summon energy are important. And you also know that you can't stand still, that you can't stand in satisfaction where you are. You must keep reaching forward. You must keep reaching into more. So you came as an extension of source energy, intending deliberately to explore the variety that surrounds you, knowing that by knowing what you don't want, you would know more clearly what you do want. And you knew that contrast would be there for you to see and to choose from in every moment of every day. And so you came forth to explore and every time you explore, even in something that is really known to you, you are still refining it and coming to further conclusions about how it would be better still. The improvement never stops because that is what life really is about. Not because it's broken and needs to be fixed, but because it's eternal and will always be in the state of becoming. So when you get into the flow of this eternal becoming, and you begin enjoying the process of the becoming, then you no longer feel uncomfortable about the contrast because you know it is necessary to the becoming. We want you to know that there are always reasons to want more, that you are always refining, and that when you have that knowledge, that attitude, that nothing has ever gone wrong, it's just another door opening for more to come to you. That that is the reason, in fact, that you come back again and again and again. You don't say, I'll go forth and this time we'll get it right. We'll decide what politics are right. We'll decide what religion is right. We'll decide what is the proper way to raise children. We'll decide what is appropriate food to eat. We'll get it all decided and we'll write it down. Maybe we can get God to write it on tablets and put it somewhere. <laughs> we'll get it all written down and then we will come forth and we will find a way of complying with what has already been decided. We will be obedient and we say, you will be bored and you would really be dead and there is no such thing as dead. You would be finished if you did not have the opportunity to explore and come to your own personal new conclusions about what you want, life would not flow through you. And what we want to convince you about is that once you come to those personal conclusions, no matter how broad or narrow or important or unimportant you deem them to be, once you come to those important conclusions, once you come to a decision about something that you want, the energy that creates worlds lines up behind you, lines up to support you, lines up to fuel you and feed you in the same way that the energy that creates worlds creates worlds. Because this is how it works, you see. You are a leading edge creator and you are meant to come to new decisions. So whether you ever hear this from us or anyone else or not, it really would not make any difference because it doesn't stop it from happening just because you're unaware of it. Just because you don't know that you're a leading edge creator doesn't mean that you aren't. And just because you don't know that you are a vibrational creator doesn't mean that vibration is not responding to you. And just because you've never heard of law of attraction doesn't mean that it doesn't consistently respond to the vibration that you're offering. All of those things are happening even in your ignorance of them. We call that creating by default. So even if you don't know why you're here, you're still here. And even if you don't know why you're exploring contrast, you still are. And even though you don't know you're giving birth to rockets of desires, you still are. 
So step one of the creative process is always happening, whether you know that it is or not. You are all contributing to the vortex, this vortex of creation that is the newly found desires that you are collectively adding to and individually adding to. So whether you know it or not, you are synthesizing life and you are giving birth to new desires and you're fulfilling your reason for being because you are reaching into what is and asking for more even if you don't put it into those words and the source within you is always doing its part by riding the rocket of your desire holding fast to the new idea and finding vibrational resonance with it and focusing completely and singularly upon it meaning no split energy holding it for the ready manifestation that you are calling fulfillment of whatever it is you've been asking for so step one happens without you knowing it and step two isn't your work anyway but step three is what we are calling the art of allowing is your work and that work is you must if you want to feel good you must if you want to find resonance with who you are you must if you want to fulfill your reason for being you must find a way of being a vibrational match to what you have through your life's work put into your vortex into this vortex of creation you must find a way of becoming a vibrational match to this idea to this newness that you desire you must find a way to feel prosperous even before the money comes or the money can't come you must find a way to feel clarity even in confusion and you might say well that doesn't sound that easy and we say it's easier than you have been believing it to be because you have the ability to find the thought of something you don't need the manifestation of it first many people say well show it to me and then I'll believe it and we say we understand that because there are plenty of people around you showing you things but often you find a way of still not believing it for yourself you believe it because someone is experiencing it but you often don't believe it for yourself you see we want you to understand that you cannot wait to see it before you believe it and if you will find a way of believing it before you see it then it must show itself to you a belief is just a thought you keep thinking it's just a practice thought sometimes Esther would say to us well Abraham I know you don't think I should be thinking about this because it doesn't feel good when I think about it but it is true it's true and therefore because it is true I think that it deserves my attention and we say anything you give your attention to becomes true and the more attention you give it the realer it becomes the closer it comes to you so if we were standing in your physical shoes the criteria that we would use for things that we would give our attention to are not the truth of them not the evidence of them not even if a lot of others or even most others are looking at them in that way we would ask ourselves in every subject that we might be giving our attention to how does this attention to this subject promote more of what I want in other words it's true do I want it to be true it's true do I want more of it it's true and do I want the more of it to come closer to me and if the answer to that is yes then give it all the attention you have time to give it talk about it write about it blog about it blog about it <laughs> But if it is not something that feels good when you give your attention to it, do your best to distract yourself from it. And sometimes you say, but it is so true and so vivid and so up close to me, I cannot seem to turn my attention from it. And we say, yes, you can. You just have to try a little harder. And often you say, but Abraham, it is so vivid and so real. And we say, why is it real? You've been giving your attention to it want to make it less real less real for you turn your attention from it and you say but it's so close and it is so big and it is so loud and now there are other people around me pointing right at it and asking me do you see that do you see that do you see that do you see that so the art of allowing is figuring out which things deserve your undivided attention and which things don't and your emotions are your very valuable key to that and then once you have decided what you actually want to give your attention to 
that you want to focus upon until it becomes an active belief within you. You see, when you give your attention to something, it's vibrating. And when you give your attention to it for a little while, it vibrates with more stability within you. And when something vibrates with stability within you, now it has attraction power and it will show itself to you in more and more vivid, real ways. So once you have decided, well, this is something that I want to come to me in more vivid ways, then give it your attention. But if it is not something you want to come to you in more vivid ways, you must distract yourself from it. So some say, okay, I'm not going to think about that thing anymore. We say, what thing? That thing you're thinking about? <laughs> yeah, that thing over there that I'm thinking about, I'm not going to think about that thing anymore because I don't want that thing that I don't want to come into my experience anymore. I don't want to think about that thing that I'm thinking about. We say, well... How are you going to deactivate it? How do you deactivate a vibration within you? You don't do it by looking at it and saying, I'm deactivating you. Because what you look at is more fully, more further activated. So how would you deactivate yourself from that thought? Think another one. Look someplace else. But then you say, it's really hard to turn my attention very far away from that. And we say, we know it is because it's active and the things that are around you are a lot about that. Might be different faces, might do different places, but they are behaving pretty much the same way because it's active within you. So how are you going to deactivate a vibration within you? Well, it's simple, simpler than you know. If you meditate, you stop thought. That's a good plan. When you sleep, you deactivate it for a while. But when you wake up, you pick it right up where you last left it. You could deliberately try to change your thought about it. But that's a little bit harder because you really only have access to thoughts that are somewhere in the vicinity. But you could gradually move to a better feeling place. Gradually. Or you could take the subject the subject that is causing you the negative emotion because that's how you know it's one you want to let go of. Yes. You could take the subject that you are feeling negative emotion about and you could become vague about it. General about it. You know how your kids do when they don't want you to know what's up? <laughs> Aren't you just amazed at how vague they can be? I don't really know. I haven't actually thought about that. I don't remember. Yes, you do. I know you remember. I know you remember you say to them because you've been extracting specifics from them for a while. But we're wanting you to let them off the hook. We're wanting you to let yourself off the hook. We're wanting you, if you're feeling negative emotion, to teach yourself the art of vagueness. <laughs> I don't really know. I haven't really thought about that. I don't really have time to think about that right now. I don't need to think about this right now. It'll be all right. Don't worry about it, mom. Don't worry about it. It'll be all right. If you can practice the art of vagueness on subjects that make you feel negative emotion and the art of specifics on subjects that do make you feel good, you will have figured deliberate creation out precisely because that really is all there is to it. The more you talk about unwanted things, the more specific they become within you. The more specific the vibration of them is. And the more specifically law of attraction will deliver the details of these unwanted things to you. Now we know that as humans, you've wanted God and more recently law of attraction to be more discerning and to not give you what you're offering a vibration about, but to give you instead what you want. But it doesn't work that way. Law of Attraction is not giving you what you want. Law of Attraction is giving you what's active in your vibration. So that really begs the question, doesn't it? Is what's active in my vibration really what I want? Is it? Am I offering a steady, active vibration about my true desires? Or am I offering a steady vibration about what is? Well, if what is, is your true desire, then that's really a good plan. But if you're reaching for something different or something more, and you always are reaching for more, then you're wanting to use a different criteria for that which you give your attention to. We have enjoyed this interaction immensely, and we mean it.
in other words we were interacting as we've been visiting your vibration has come right up to speed as we've been rambling here about these things that for the most part you already know holding you in a steady conversation about them you have come into vibrational alignment with your true knowledge about how to